Carving out time to read manga can be challenging, but I was happy to be able to read more manga than I thought this month. I'm happy to report that I've even made progress on my top five manga I wanted to read this year list. No one for five score for me this year. I'm hitting the books early to accomplish my goals. So now, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's talk about some manga. Starting us off is Moriarty the Patriot Volume 11. Hey, you knew I was going to start off with this series. It's one of my favorites, and I honestly won't stop praising this series until I see more people talking about it. Or at least until one other person talks to me about how much they enjoy it as well. Someone please talk to me about this manga. In case you need a refresher or are new to the channel, Moriarty the Patriot is a story about William James Moriarty as he battles against the English class system in the 19th century. Of course, Sherlock Holmes' most notorious nemesis can't be without the man himself. The two battle it out in a game of wits, and I enjoy every single page of this series. This particular volume focused on Sherlock and an interesting case that leads him straight back to a character I am very much looking forward to both Moyarty and Holmes confronting. Without spoiling the story, if you like mystery or psychological thrillers, you need to check this series out. Go for it again, Nakamura, by Sunde. This is the sequel to Go For It, Nakamura, which I thoroughly enjoyed. This manga tells the story of Nakamura, an introverted gay boy who in the previous volume just became friends with a boy he likes. He slowly tries to work up the nerve to speak with him again, and all sorts of shenanigans ensue. The art style is fantastic, alongside some spot-on comedy moments. You may notice that the art style is more in line with the 90s vibe, and I absolutely love it. It goes perfectly with the storytelling. The only thing I can say negatively about this volume was that it ended so quickly. I remember just laughing and reading, and then I turned the page and it was over. If you haven't read this manga or its prequel, I highly suggest you pick up a copy and let yourself enjoy watching Nakamura try his best. She Loves to Cook and She Loves to Eat by Sakomi Yukazi, Volume 1. This was one of the titles I wanted to start this year, and I'm happy to mark this one off the list. The story is about Nomoto, a woman who loves to cook. Not because she's trying to be a better girlfriend or training to be a mother. She just loves to cook. It's her hobby, and I think it's great. One day, she invites her neighbor Kazuga over for dinner, and happily finds out Kazuga enjoys eating and in large amounts. This allows Nomoto to cook to her heart's content as both women forge an unlikely friendship. I recently posted a review video about this series, so if you want a more in-depth review, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Spoiler alert, I loved it and I think you will too. Love of Kill Volume 3 The third installment of this series has made me even more interested and excited to keep reading. This story of two assassins has me hooked. Some great fights, heavy implications, and one heck of a cliffhanger. I'm more than excited to pick up the next volume. Donuts Under a Crescent Moon, Volume 4 This volume marks the end of a GL series that proved to me not everything is bait, and that we can experience wholesome and realistic issues within a series without fetishizing someone's sexual orientation. For its short run, I think this series did a fantastic job showing us it's alright to take things at our own pace, and to not fold to society's and others' expectations of our own happiness. I do think the last volume felt a bit rushed. I would have liked to see things slow down a bit further, and explore a bit more of our main characters' lives and relationships. Overall, I still recommend the series, even if the last volume didn't feel the same impactfulness of the first. Tomorrow, Make Me Yours by Karoko Miyama This is a single volume series published in English by Tokyopop. This series was recommended to me by a bizarre individual. This BL story is about a shy boy named Yuki who falls in love with a popular boy named Hayato. Plot twist though, Hayato likes him too. The tale of two opposites becoming friends and falling in love is always nice to see, and this manga executes the premise well. I liked that there was less unsolvable drama in this for our couple to get together. 
Not to say there isn't a bit of drama when Yuki wants to be noble and lets some girl who likes Hayato have some time with him, but that Yuki and Hayato actually communicate instead of spending needless months alone in silent agony on Miscommunication Island. It was also nice to see two people who were both interested in one another for once. Their big confession is less, do I really feel this way? And more just warm fuzzy feelings. Oh, he likes me too. Overall, I really enjoyed reading this title for some fluffy, heartwarming goodness. The Invisible Man and His Soon-To-Be Wife by Iwatobeko, Volume 1 The story surrounds a detective agency where an invisible man named Tonome and a blind office worker named Yoko work. I have been looking forward to reading the series. I enjoyed the art style and the unique use of the bright teal background that makes the black and white characters pop. I wrote a more in-depth review on my blog, so if you want to know more, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Otomen by Aya Kano, Volume 1 I'm staying on top of the manga titles I wanted to start this year. Otomen tells the story of Asaka Masumin, a guy who likes girly things such as sewing and shoujo manga. However, he puts up a manly front so that no one will ever know. On the other end of the spectrum, Ryo is a girl who can't do anything a girl is supposed to do like bake or so, Asaka finds himself having a crush on Ryo. The premise of two individuals bending gender norms is what first interested me in this title. I'm looking forward to seeing where the story goes, because it otherwise didn't immediately pull me in. Still, I'll be picking up the next volume of the series because some aspects did grab my attention. On the digital front, I picked up Puppy Love by Haru Sushida. The story is about an overworked man named Inukai who passes by a pet shop and befriends a worker named Hoshi. Inukai promises to work hard to be able to leave his current job in order to adopt a puppy while Hoshi supports him. If you're looking for spice in your BL manga, this is not it. However, it does manage to cover Slice of Life, which we can all appreciate. I won't recommend this as a run out and buy title, mostly because the twist in this manga is a bit… weird. Not kink shaming, but this wasn't quite for me. If you've already read this title, you probably already know what I'm referring to. This manga was on sale for a buck, and I don't regret picking it up for that price. But I do think there are several other series that are a better use of your time. Crazy Food Truck by Rokuro Ogaki, Volume 1 Not typically the type of manga I pick up, the colorful cover, font, and an elderly looking chap with glasses on the front cover caused me to read this particular title. Seriously, if a manga has an older man with glasses on it, I'm probably going to at least read the first chapter. Crazy Food Truck is about, well you probably guessed it, a man named Gordon, no not Jim, who runs a food truck in a post-apocalyptic world. One day, while driving around, he finds an unnecessarily naked girl in a sleeping bag in the middle of the road. Moving past that, Gordon, who hasn't fed a customer in a while, feeds her and she enjoys the meals. Where the story got interesting for me is there is an unnamed military faction running around looking for said girl. When Gordon gets pulled over and they want to search his food truck for her, he bursts into action. This food truck owner isn't just selling sandwiches. He's packing quite the armament. Gordon has a cannon in his food truck. Not exactly what Batman would approve of, but it gets the job done and sends a message. As the story unfolds, we get to see more of the world, the people who live in it, and teases about Gordon's own past affiliation with the military. I will also add a note that nothing creepy happens in the first volume with the young girl. Gordon treats her like a child, and for this, I was grateful. Gordon is actually an interesting character with a good sense of humor, and he's badass when he needs to be. While this volume isn't perfect, I did enjoy the crazy ride and will probably pick up the next volume. This series has a total of three volumes and is already complete. And that, my friends, are all the manga I read in April. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have you read any standout series lately? Did you pick up any of these same titles? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you all in the next video. I'm Zath. Have a good day.